am I supposed to save the world if I don't know what I'm doing? I would I, I would say that um, you know in conversations with our showrunner Albert Kim who did a wonderful job uh, I had a lot of questions about how they were going to adapt the show how they were going to approach it as a live action you know how they were going to uh, deal with the characters uh, and uh, how they were going whether they were going to be respectful to the original IP uh, and so. You know, I, after speaking with him, I had a lot of faith in what he was doing. It was a very thoughtful approach uh, to the show, and he recognized that it couldn't be the same as the animated series because there were certain things that, that you can do in an animated series that you can't do in a live action and vice versa and different styles of storytelling. So once I'd heard how much thought and, and, and effort he put into the adaptation, uh, I was really happy to come aboard. Mm, how did I prepare? I think watching the show is really important for for me getting to getting to know the character. Um, music played a huge part in it as well. The costumed, the costume was was like at the end of the day the the one thing that like kept me so grounded in her character because like mm. you can't like you're like just like this mm. the whole time and like you can't even like really like even move your neck because you got this like collar that's up to here it just like that body like, the body going first and the mind following was mm. was really important for Azula yeah um for me early on Albert Kim our showrunner producer uh suggested that I watch the Rod Lurie film, The Last Castle, with Robert Redford and James Gandolfini. He said, pay attention to James Gandolfini's character. Um, there are similar, it's not a perfect analog, but there's, there's something in the way, James Gandolfini plays this prison warden, and he's kind of uh, in, obsessed with war and war culture, he has all these military artifacts in his office, he has no personal experience of battle, but he feels that his love of the artifacts kind of earns him the same respect as if he had actual experience. And, and Zhao is similar in that he feels that he is destined for something that he kind of has no reason, outward reason to deserve um, and that that kind of longing and that kind of wanting or, or reaching for something greater than where you're at was similar so it's it started from that place you have to start with the rewatch uh, of the original series that's the blueprint that's the backbone and the lovely thing about that was you know they, they were very very respectful to the source material in the scripts that we got now it was an adaptation because, as Daniel said, certain things in the animated world do not translate well in terms of storytelling in a live action setting. And so there's enough of a twist to it uh, that it, there, are, there is new material that's in there. Uh, characters, certain characters are introduced a little bit earlier, for example, but it's a very collaborative process and it mm. starts with the script as well. We get these wonderful scripts written by fantastic writers. Um, you make your choices as an actor, you, you do your homework, and then you're collaborating with the directors and writers and producers and then your scene partners, and you're all sort of working together to tell the best story possible while still maintaining an authenticity uh, and, and uh, you know, staying truthful to the characters as they're set out. And so you're building and you're adding bits of yourself as a performer to it because we're not hired to be puppets or, or mimics. We're hired as artists to bring part of ourselves into the characters that we're portraying while still trying to maintain true to what's already been established. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what, that's the prep. And it's making sure that, uh, you know, like for me, example, for example, uh, the relationship with Zuko. That's what I wanted to focus on. It had to be real. It had to be believable and had to follow the same sort of intentions and arcs that were established in the animated series. I, I don't know what I could add to that here. That was such a good answer. <laughs> Um, but yes, it did start with going back and watching the, the series because uh, 
in an effort to be respectful of the original source material, you have to know the source material, mm -hmm. and and you have to know where you're when you're diverging from it, and when you're leaning into it. And so, uh, you know, I I started there, and then I started just kind of thinking about family dynamics, uh, and you know what kind of a father uh, Ozai was, and how that played into his work, literally. You know, like, and that is a a balance that most parents. Uh, ask questions about like what is uh, what is the role of your family vis-a-vis uh, -vis your work and the things that you want to do in your life for yourself uh, that's a really nice way of putting Ozai's journey <laughs> into words I mean he he wants world domination and he wants his children to be a part of that so how does that how does that manifest itself you know how would you want to parent in in that kind of a uh, a dynamic and so those are the questions I started to ask. I also did a deep dive into YouTube analysis videos but I really think our source material was research in itself um, every time we got scripts and things like that because there are um, a lot of similarities but also many differences in our show and so sometimes um, you know when the circumstances of our characters might slightly be different, I think it changes that character as well, while maintaining the essence of what the original creators had in mind. And also at the end of the day, because we are making this live action adaptation, um, I don't think anybody here would wanna do an impersonation of these characters, mm -hmm. of an animation. I think we um, really did our best in making these people real and um, allowing for everything that was going on in the world to, um, you know, ground, be grounded. The A lot of the fight scenes for me, I was just like, like mouth hanging open. I was just like, wow. The, there's like the, the Umashu fight that Zuko and Aang have uh, with like the scarves and the music so beautiful. Um, the, the, the blue spirit uh, fight scenes are so incredible. Um, the moments that Katara and Sokka have with the brotherly, brother and sister dynamic is, is really, really cool to see in real life. Um, most challenging scenes, I, I think, you know, with Azula, you see her have to go through these kind of um, unspeakable things with her dad that you, it kind of just hurts to watch a little bit. Mm. Um, I think that those were really hard to just... Uh, be so nervous in front of Daniel and then have to hear him say those things to me and then like also like internalize them as the character. Um, yeah, I guess that, but it's also so much fun and and yeah, really cool. Yeah, the fight scenes were, were challenging for me. You, you rehearse them and they're so kind of choreographed and, and yet when you're on the set and you're kind of going at it all out, um, there's this dance of remembering the steps yet uh, also kind of being loose enough to be spontaneous. So that, 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 uh, that dance is always kind of tricky for me. There were so many scenes where I got to, um, I think the heart of Sokka is like the comedy and then the human vulnerability, like breaking through the seams of that a little bit. Um, for the live action. Um, I think that a scene that really portrays that well are, um, we can't like speak too much about it, but like episode 105 um, is a, is a episode where um, we really get to see a lot of why Sokka is the way that he is, um, his relationship with his family, um, and how the... Um, the like kind of realizes um lots of oh gosh this is so hard to answer <laughs> with the not wanting to spoil too much but anyway you get the gist <laughs> <laughs> like i said i before i i i find the the most remarkable scenes in avatar are when ang is in the avatar state mm. i find that it speaks to such a uh um, a deep spiritual experience that we all are curious about. Mm. Um, and it's portrayed in this 
kind of no mistake about it way uh, where all the avatars that ever were are in it. Um, it, it reminds me of, you know, you know, we all talk about being woke and what, it, <laughs> what does that mean and what is an awakening? You know, what is a spiritual awakening? I, not that I know, but I think it kind of looks like that ish. Yeah. And so that, that to me is kind of beyond remarkable. Yeah. It's, it speaks to something we all sense, don't know how to talk about, but are, are, are kind of maybe now more than ever just because of the language and the culture um, more, more attuned to. 